Welcome back. Hamza Lawau is an activist who has successfully led grassroots campaigns in over 40 African countries with a nine year experience in the nonprofit sector. He is the founder of Follow the Money, a pan African grassroots data driven movement, and leads a team of technology and innovation driven campaigners. He's, the, he's currently the Chief Executive of Connected Development, CODE, and he won the One Africa 2016 Award. He is one of the influencers of the Not Too Young to Run movement. On today's episode, we celebrate Hamza Lawal for recently winning the UN SDG Action Award for Mobilizer of the Year 2019. Hamza Lawal, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. I almost feel like I... I, I prophesied this into your life because I always call him <laughs> a community <laughs> organizer. He is that when it comes to No, you're taking credit for that. Are, <laughs> He's I mean, like, I prophesied it. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Pay your tithe. You know how it feels how we, we take suffering where you say you have headache and I was like, ah, the one I had yesterday was worse. <laughs> That's what we're doing for Hamza. So I prophesied. I saw it coming. Like, Hamza, what I was else so did you proud see of coming? <laughs> Honestly. So the money you're about to share for us. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Hamza. Well, thank you for having me. Well, Congratulations, that's all we can say. You, out of 2,000 nomi um, nominees, you're the only African to bring home this award. Tell us about it. Um, so I got an email seven weeks ago from the UN say classified, um, you're, you've been nominated for an award. Uh, we're inviting you to attend the Global Festival of Action where the winner will be unveiled. And then I started processing my paperwork. You know, we're supposed to go together yes, with you, we but were. then your passport got stuck at the embassy. So mm -hmm. so we got to the UN and the first day was for the finally. So out of uh, 2,000 entries from 147 countries around the world, you know, we had people, we had, so we had delegates of uh, 1,500 and speakers of over 150 people. and. So they, they shortlisted to 21. And then 21 of us would have to come on stage and pitch for three minutes, just to talk about what we do for three minutes, tell stories. So for me, I got on stage and talked about how we started our movement in Zanfara State and how we're now Pan-African in Kenya, Gambia, Liberia, and, and you know, Cameroon. And then that evening, uh, the, the now when they were about to, sh you know, mentioned the winner and, and the interesting part was mobilizer was the first category so you know i was just sitting there about to have a heart attack and i traveled with two of my colleagues chambers and zeliha chambers was already collapsing <laughs> zeliha was <laughs> literally about to cry and we just had follow the money oh. that <laughs> moment was amazing mm. it was it's like wow something good you know we, we as young people like Again, this award, as long as, uh, as, as much as it's for Follow the Money, I think most importantly is for Nigeria, and specifically for young people in Nigeria, that we, when we commit, when we're focused and dedicated, you know, the sky is our starting point as young people. And this also connects to the fact that the world is currently debating uh, illegal migration. I started this movement eight years ago because I, I, I had a vision or I had, you know, I had that drive. And today I'm being, I'm being recognized by the United Nations. I never did plan it, but what I know is I was consistent and I was focused and, and this for me is also saying, well, the world is recognizing you. So it means you're doing something different. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. I feel like I want to cry. <laughs> when, uh, when you started this eight years ago, what was the big picture for you? Where, where was the peak in your head? Did you see it coming this far, being spread across several countries in Africa? Honestly, no. I think for me, when I started, I, I, w I told myself I want to be a solution, not a problem. My generation were very good at complaining. Uh, and so for me, I'm like, no, I, I can't join that bag wagon and always go on social media and complain. I, I, why can't I be part of the solution? And, and that's why I left my comfort zone. Oh yes, I'm busy in Abuja, but I traveled over 18 hours just to hear voices of people and help use the same platform where we complain to amplify their voice and get government to respond. So I didn't see this coming. Welcome back to the weekend show. Sorry about that. Uh, we're experiencing a little bit of some technical issues. We're speaking to Hamza Lawal, the winner of the UN SDGs Mobilizer of the Year Award. Hamza, thank you for staying tight. Well, thank you for having me. So you were talking about, you know, how this award makes you feel, the work that you've done, you know, at the grassroots level, 
you've been on many of my programs many times and we've talked about uh, the impact of the grassroots work and uh, the significance of it because uh, just like you we're able to communicate and take words directly from the mouths of everyday Nigerians to the ears of their leaders by ensuring accountability and transparency. Uh, there's a specific project of yours that I always like to refer to. I believe that this was what truly kick-started your career as um, a community mobilizer, uh, the Save Bagaga campaign, yes. where you followed the money um, that was appropriated to this community and where children were dying of lead poisoning and what have you. And Hamza was able to reveal that there was a budget appropriated mm -hmm. for uh, this issue and it hadn't been dispensed. So he went there and ensured that the government was actually doing what it said it would do. So speak to us more about that. Uh, so in 2010, uh, there was lead poisoning outbreak. At that time, it was reported that uh, 400 children had died. In 2012, I was struggling to get information on what has happened between 2010 and 2012 because at that time, it was declared a national emergency and millions of dollars, billions of naira was released uh, so government could intervene. So I went to the Ministry of Mines and Solid Minerals. I went to the Ministry of Environment. I went to the Ministry of Health. And no one could really point at what they have done or how they've used public uh, funds. So I got on a bus going to Zanfara. So mind you, I'm not from Zanfara State, I'm not from the north, neither am I from the south, east or west. <laughs> yeah, I'm Nigerian. From Nigeria. <laughs> so, uh, it took me about seven hours from Abuja to Guso. Uh, from Guso to Anka took another three and a half hours and from Anka to Bagega took me four hours on a motorbike. And when I got to this community, I, I got there the next day, I found firsthand what pain really is and what suffering was, where I met grandmothers and mothers that have lost four children in a household. Some household, they've lost about 12 kids below five years due to the impact of lead poisoning, and which is caused by artisanal and small-scale mining. And I, I found out first time that over 700 children had actually died, and 1,500 children were at the verge of losing their life if nothing happened. So what I did was to take my mobile phone and took pictures and videos, because there's a saying that pictures and videos don't lie. So I came back to Abuja and me and my friend uh, started the campaign that's Oludo Tumba by me. We started a campaign with a hashtag called Save Bagega. And what we did was to disaggregate all the data and information and push them on social media. And we got a lot of people, you know, so, so we got you, Andy, who retweeted and tweeted about Save Bagega. And in less than 48 hours, it went viral. So Al Jazeera, BBC, CNN picked our story. And, and then the then president approved the sum of $9.3 million, which is over 850 million Naira. And at that time, we now understood the politics of money. So there's difference between approval, releases, and utilization. As much as we were excited at that time, and, and luckily I was more conscious about how these funds would move from Abuja to the community. And one week later, two weeks later, the money was not moving. And then we started another campaign, but this time focused on the Ministry of Finance to disburse these funds. And then finally, the funds got disbursed. And then we tracked the money from Abuja to Guso and then to Bagega. And, and today, Bagega community, over 1,500 children got free medical intervention. They got a new primary school, new primary health care center. The road are now tired. So it takes you less than 30 minutes from Anka. We took you four hours yes, to Bagega. Time. And you can go with anything you want to go with. So if you want to go with a motorbike or a car, you know, it's 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 not and, and for for us after that campaign which was very successful you know we got a lot of uh, attention and a lot of people reached out oh we like what you're doing how can we support you to scale and that's how we scaled and follow the money became institutionalized and then we ran a lot of campaigns and and uh, in Ghana that was in 2017 I was invited by the US State Department to train a lot of young people so for the past four years uh, the U.S. State Department have taken me around the world. I've been to Southeast Asia, Cambodia, you know, I've been to the U.S., I've been to Europe, training young people on how to use technology for organizing and amplifying voices, you know, doing offline and online campaigns. And, and in Ghana, I met with a young man called Ma, and Ma was so excited about my presentation, and he came at me and he was like, our elections are around the corner. Yaya Jami have ruled us for 20 years as a dictator and I want to mobilize young people to go get registered and come out and vote. And then we started a campaign called Gambia Participate, where when uh, uh, he went back to the Gambia, all he did was he went on social media on radio and TV and told young people, just go out, get registered and on the election they come out and vote. And that was how they voted Adama Baro democratically. And, and afterwards he came at me again, Hamza, 
a lot of I've mobilized a lot of young people. What next? I'm like, follow the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and at that time, the U.S. government, the EU, uh, is sending in millions and, and, and millions of dollars, millions of euros to, to Gambia so that they, they can uh, uh, build institutions. So I was like, let's follow the money. And that's how we started the first chapter internationally in the Gambia. And today, Ma is doing extremely well. Uh, and then from there, we started Kenya, and then Liberia, Cameroon. And interestingly, these people are the ones who reach out and say, we want to start following the money. You guys are doing amazing. You know, every meeting we go to, both locally and internationally, they were saying, do you know Hamza Follow the money? So you, you, you should start <laughs> following the money. And, and today we have over 5,000 members on ifollowthemoney.org. And, and now we're talking to people in Southeast Asia. So after this award, Almost all the delegates was like, I want to start follow the money <laughs> in my <laughs> country. I'm like, okay. Wow. So it's actually moved from just an African yes. movement now to a global one. Yes. Hamza, we're always so proud of you, and it's always a pleasure having you on the show. Uh, to end this segment of the weekend show, we'll be airing, uh, we'll be calling now for the video from Bonn, Germany, where Hamza was awarded UN SDG Mobilizer of the Year 2019. Take a look. Winner of the 2019 UN SDG Action Award for the Mobilizer category is, drum roll. Do it, do it, do it, I like it. <laughs> Follow the money, Nigeria. Follow the Money is an initiative by Connected Development that's impacted over 2 million rural lives by tracking over $10 million meant for social development across African communities, empowering citizens and marginalized communities to hold governments to account for their commitments. Thank you. From Nigeria, we have showed that mobilizing citizens, engaging governments, using data, telling stories of voices that people think does not exist, bring about real and tangible change. We have shown that achieving the SDGs is about connecting the dots. The least we can do as individuals and citizens is just to ask the right questions. We all pay tax in respective of where we're from. International aid money finds its way back to my country and your countries. How can we ensure that this money is used judiciously? I believe if we ask for those answers in 2030, we can raise our shoulders high and say we've done well. I want to thank our partners, our supporters, and you most importantly, because with you, we can go places. On that note, I would like to officially launch our 2018 impact report. In 2018, we were able to track over $10 million in Nigeria and reached directly 2 million lives. Thank you. Thank you. How high is the bar now? <laughs> On the accountability, um, we're going to turn to Hamzi. Um, the, I've heard people say, we need more of that. I've heard former politicians in your country say, uh, and global leaders say, that it was helpful what you were doing because it allowed and enabled them to be able to be held accountable in their own constituencies and people. So how do we take it to the next level? You know, interestingly, Nigeria just came out of an election and the slogan for the ruling party that won was, taking Nigeria to the next level. And I believe that with this award, um, I'm now on that 
pathway in helping them take Nigeria to the next level. Starting from 2012, where we advocated for uh, the release of $5.3 million, and, and today now mobilizing over 5,000 citizens to track over $10 million uh, in, in Nigeria, impacting over 2 million lives. Uh, for me, I'm already in conversation with my colleague from the Philippines. Yesterday after the award, he was like, Hamzat, we need to follow the money in the Philippines because corruption is not only prevalent in Nigeria, but also in the Philippines. And Lebanon. And Lebanon. Yeah. My sister is and, saying... And everywhere. Yes. She's That's telling me that more. a lot of young people need to access health care on sexual and reproductive health. Millions of dollars is coming to my country, but we can't see value for this money. How can we take follow the money to Malawi? And for me, it's about liberating Africa. Today, we're dealing with increased migration. A lot of people are leaving the continent and are coming to Europe. For me, it's about ensuring that we get tax justice. Everyone pays tax. Even you who claim you're unemployed, you pay tax. And for me, it's ensuring that we leverage on this award the visibility, the credibility, the authenticity gives to following the money and ensuring accountability by ensuring that every single cent in Nigeria, in other African countries, around the world count. So that when we get to 2030, we can raise our shoulders high and say, for once, we've held our leaders accountable. But also, as much as I'm going to lead a movement mobilizing citizens, I would also mobilize governments and politicians because they need that data. They need access to information to inform their decision and policy making. And we must see them as a partner, a partner towards prosperity. So for me, it's informing them and engaging them, but creating a safe space so young people, older people can engage and we can have intergenerational equity. So you've, you've raised an interesting point. Um, and I think in terms of the various categories that are represented here on the stage, whether it's visualization, storyteller, mobilizer, people's choice, et cetera, et cetera, um, we need everyone. And we need all of it to be able to deliver what it is that we need to deliver and what Please world leaders... Please make your way to the next session. Please make your way. Um, so, on to you. Welcome back to the lifestyle segment of the weekend show. Joining us now, we have Valerie, Iberi, and Faith, who are the conveners of the Emerging Entrepreneurs Summit and Award 2019. Welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very You're most welcome. Much. Um, so entrepreneurship is interesting because we've seen a rise, a growth um, in, in the number of entrepreneurs in Nigeria and in the world generally. So it's interesting that you're doing this. Do you want to tell us why you're doing what led to the Emerging Entrepreneurs Summit? Okay, thank you very much. Um, the Emerging Entrepreneurs Summit is, is a vision that must engulf this nation, is a vision that must engulf uh, Africa because it's highly important that we put our feet on the ground to ensure that we create jobs for ourselves and ensure that um, our youths, instead of just roaming the streets, becomes employed and as well as uh, being em employers of labor. That's basically what we're doing. So the summit is aimed at uh, building capacity of uh, young entrepreneurs, vibrant ones who, who are coming on board on that same, on the 16th of uh, May. The summit is um, going to hold, it's going to be a, there's going to be an award section. We're going to be appreciating those who have also done excellently well in what they are doing, uh, uh, make, who had made entrepreneurial exploits, who have reached several gaps in entrepreneurship and all that. So on that day, we are going to have young people Vibrant entrepreneurs come together, we interact, we uh, look at the issues, we discuss, we explore platforms that are available, opportunities that are available, access to funding and all that within that day. That's what we are going to be doing that day. Okay, um, so what was the, um, why did you, the, the, the awardees for the day, what was the selection um, criteria for the people who are going to be awarded? Now, the, the, uh, the selection criteria was that one, among our, our members and our various participants in the past, we had a shortlisted some, we asked them to nominate. They nominated, we shortlisted, and um, who put it up, uh, asked them to consult their close friends and come up with uh, their opinion. So we had a vote for each of the categories and 
the persons that were finally nominated were selected and by God's grace we'll be celebrating them that day. So what's the big picture? After this award, where do we go from here? What do we do? Do we just have the same thing next year? What's the big picture? No, the big I think let's give a diary <laughs> yeah. a chance to answer that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's where we come in. Raw material, we're giving them a platform. Taking all our research, all our projects, all our endeavors, we're putting it into the market out there for the emerging entrepreneurs, especially the existing one, to take cognizance of the fact that the value chain of raw material is there for them to key into, to grow wealth, to create employment, to generate uh, employment also, because some are already existing and we're trying to develop newer entrepreneurs because that's the only way to go. So Raw Material Research and Development Council, we are giving them a platform. Then after the summit, they come to us. We already have an in-house committee and did several divisions, over 40 divisions, to assist them to grow their businesses, to start their businesses, to get financing, to get knowledge, technical and otherwise. So that's where we come in. The sustainability of the project is what we are after for the Nigerian people. Thank you very Thank much. You very <laughs> much. <laughs> Faith, is what I was about to talk about sustainability, which yes. you just mentioned, <laughs> what do you think is extremely important? Like two things you think entrepreneurs must have in mind to be able to um, sustain their businesses and see it through in the long run. Okay. Thank you. I think, I think what they must have in, in mind in uh, sustaining their uh, businesses is focus. Yes. They have to be focused. Yeah, cool. No distraction. You know where you're going to. Yes. You know what you are trying to achieve. Focus on what you want to achieve. And when you are focused, the, the sky will be your starting point. Perfect. Finally, mm -hmm. Iberi, um, the event is coming up on the 16th and 17th yes. of May. That is Thursday and Friday yes. of this coming week. Yes. Um, so what do you want our viewers to know and what key takeaways uh, do you expect them to uh, get from this interview? Okay. Um, well basically, they are going to be very important key, uh, resource persons. We have our keynote speaker coming all the way from Conventry University uh, in the UK. They, are, they have a uh, transformational entrepreneurship center. The, uh, the keynote speaker is coming all the way from that. Uh, also, I'm also glad to tell our viewers that um, Hamza Lawad that just left here is one of the persons who is going to, <laughs> who is going to um, tell us the secret behind such awards and yeah. inspire young people to do greater things. Yeah. We also have so many other resource persons. Um, we have uh, Mr. Boma, who is an expert in agriculture, who has traveled around the world doing agri-business. He will be there to tell us what to explore then. And in addition to that, apart from the awardees, who have um, show, who have, who also be mentoring um, the young people to come up. In addition to that, Raw Material Research Development Council has set up an in-house committee that will assess funding from the donor agencies for people who will participate in the summit for them to at least have a starting point and also grow their business. Then there are a lot of things that we have the support, uh, the uh, collaboration of uh, UNIDO Nigeria. We have um, um, other partners who are there. To the basic thing is that every participant who participates properly, who does goes through the processes of learning and capacity building, will be sure that he or she will no longer be seeking for jobs. And this is open to the public. People can yes, attend it's for open free. to the public. No, yes. no need for registration. Uh, yes, at no. Raw Material Research and Development Council, okay. Abuja, yeah. okay. 17 Aguin Ronsi Street, Meitama, very close to the Transcorp. Yes. So it's free to all youth. Perfect. To all youth. So youth, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> what age? <Okay>. <laughs> 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 because only in Nigeria you have a 60-year-old calling himself a youth. <laughs> they are welcome. So everybody is welcome. Is welcome. But we are more yeah, particular welcome. about the youth because youth. they are okay. the one in that category, demography, yes. mm -hmm. that does not have job and are seeking employment. Yes. So we want them to have something doing. Even okay. the ones that are already employed can have something doing because the value chain of raw material is just enormous. Mm. So we key into the youth. We want to develop them. That's the passion of my director general, Professor H.D. Ibrahim. He's so passionate about the youth development and women too because he believes so much in the youth of this country. Mm. So the youth are free to come from all over Nigeria. All over Nigeria. <laughs> well, you heard it uh, here. Please, uh, I want to say that um, all participants must come in time.
because since we are not having reservations, yes. our seats so are limited. Um, yes. it's, the summit starts by nine. The workshop starts by nine, while the summit um, proper starts by 11. Nine. But I am sure before nine, every person who wants to be a part of this must be seated. Yes. Because um, the hall is not as big as what we know uh, the people who need what we are talking about who want to. That's you know. a fine place to leave it. Barry, Valerie, Faith, thank, thank you, you so you. much for coming thank in you. today's program. Thank we'll take a short break much. right now. When we return, more on the weekend show. Don't go anywhere.